forgot to say, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, we're so glad you're here. And there's a little blue card. And if you want to fill that out, you can give it to me after the service if you'd like or uh, leave it anywhere. We'll find it. <laughs> but uh, that's one way to connect with us. And don't forget to pass the little attendance pads. Um, so we're in the middle of a sermon series going through the Sermon on the Mount. We're in Matthew 7 today. And so the Sermon on the Mount is Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. Um, and so I got to preface this by saying we're starting today almost near the end. We're getting towards the back end of the sermon. And so you missed Matthew 5 and 6. So if you weren't here, we started the sermon series in September. So I'm going to need you to go back and watch all of the sermons in September, October, and November, and it'll be fine. No, I'm kidding. But you might want to read, though. You might want to read Matthew 5 and 6 because it, the, the Sermon on the Mount is one teaching, and it's brilliant. And so today we're starting with judge not, lest you be judged. But that's not where it starts. You know, it starts, Jesus has already done a lot of teaching on our hearts, and he, we're, we've been working on our anger We've been working on our, our lust and our inordinate desires. We've been working on uh, how we handle our money, how we deal with stress and worry. We've been dealing with how are we in our marriage or singleness. We've been dealing with our honesty. I mean, all of this has come prior to this. And we've talked about how, how to pursue God through prayer and through fasting and through giving. Now, if one were to actually take Jesus seriously on all these teachings and really try to, to go, okay, God, let's work. I want to work on my anger. Work on my anger. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to put you first in the area of my money. I'm going to pray. Guess what? If you start doing that, I'm willing to bet your life's going to get better and it's going to improve. But what happens? Sometimes when we start getting on the right path, it's real easy to start to notice other people when they're not on the right path. And that's where we are today. Okay, Matthew chapter seven, verses one through five. Hear God's word. <clears throat> Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or, or how can you say to your neighbor, uh, let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, Take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And I forgot at the first service to mention this, but the sermon, I, I you know, you always try to come up with a title for a sermon. Half the time there, I end up thinking for a better title after it's been preached, you know. But the title today is The Problem with Love the Sinner, Hate the Sin. You know, anybody ever said, or heard that, said that? I've said that. I think it's a good thing. It's a good move in, in sort of Christian thinking to go, hey, we're going to love people. We're going to love the sinner, but hate the sin. We're not going to hate the sinner. The problem with that phrase is it still has me focusing on your sin. You see what I'm saying? So I heard a, another Christian who said, love the sinner, hate your own sin. And you get, I mean, just a little subtle thing, but love the sinner. Oh, I love them. I'm just going to really, I'm just, I'm just, don't like that about you. Okay. So isn't it interesting? How many of us, and this is true for me, like my life was a mess. I cried out to Jesus. I needed help. I knew I needed forgiveness. I was in a trap that I could not spring on my own. And I came and Jesus set me free. He put my feet upon the rock. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to my God. You know, I can't get from where I used to be to where I am today, apart from the, just the miraculous help of God. Anybody, amen, in your own life? Isn't it amazing, though, that we can go from being like the prodigal son, the younger brother, 
in the prodigal son story. And then after a few years and we get a little bit dusted off and we get cleaned up, isn't it amazing how suddenly we become the elder brother? And we become frustrated that other people, why does, how come everybody, why are they, it's not fair. Why did they get, I had to do all this. Maybe it's just me. And we become little mini Pharisees, don't we? And it's easy to do, but it's hard to see it in ourselves. And that's why I think Jesus, I don't like this teaching today because Jesus is funny, isn't he? Why do you see the speck in your brother's eye, your neighbor's eye? I think he said it wrong. I mean, shouldn't he have said, why do you see the log in your, your, your friend's eye, but you don't notice the speck in your own eye? I mean, because clearly that's what's going on here. I mean, they've got this glaring issue, and if they would just, and of course, I mean, maybe I've got a minor fault here or there, but I'm, oh, did any of you, when you were kids, kids, don't listen to this, Okay. But when I was a kid, how many of you pulled this one? When I would get a little bit mouthy or a little bit, you know, out of sorts with my parents, I would plead how much better I am than my friends. Anybody ever did? Anybody ever tried this line of reasoning? You know, like, um, mommy, you just don't know. You wouldn't believe how bad the other kids in my class are. I mean... I didn't say it this way, but really what my heart was saying was, you're really lucky <laughs> that all you have to deal with is my minuscule stuff. You should, I mean, ooh, they're bad, mom, they're bad. And so many of you know, I'm in recovery. I love the 12-step movement. It's a big part of my life. And one of the things I love about the 12-step movement is they figured out how in a way to do this non-judgmentalism. Like the thing, I mean, if you've ever been to a meeting of any kind of 12 step type meetings, like you know what I'm talking about. I have never in my life found a place where I am more welcome. I mean, and people who stumble into AA usually are not uh, crushing it in life. You know, you usually don't come in on a winning streak. And a lot of times when we go into a place like AA or NA or CA or whatever, you a lot of times you feel like you've been burned by your church. And maybe you haven't been, but a lot of times you feel like I'm not welcome at my church. I'm too, I am too bad. I've made too big of mistakes. I'm, not, I, I'm embarrassed to walk into church. My family won't speak to me. I've lost another job. I've burnt, they, a lot of times we've burned every bridge there is to burn, and yet we come into this group of people and they just say, hey, man, keep coming back. We're glad you're here. We will love you until you love yourself. We will go through anything with you. And it really is this beautiful gift that God has given the world uh, in the 1900s. And, and it continues to this day. And I mean, it meant so much to me to just be welcomed and truly like, truly loved. But what is so crazy is if you go to these meetings and you actually get right, it's amazing how you, I mean, like I go there because I literally could not get sober. My life was a mess. I was hurting everybody, everybody. I was causing pain. Don't think I'm hurting anybody but myself, but you know, there's collateral damage everywhere. And then six months later, I'm sober. And it, it, how quickly we go from a total train wreck to a person who now goes, oh man, they're an alcoholic. Can you believe, like everyone in my life who drinks now is an alcoholic? A year ago, I couldn't help myself, but now I'm here to help all of you. It's kind of like I heard a comedian say, how long do you have to be vegan before you quit telling everybody about it? <laughs> That's good, isn't it? You know, because like, oh, you know what they do to those chickens, right? And it's like, you know, you ate them for 37 years, okay? <laughs> So calm, like, have a cookie, you know? <laughs> but how quickly will we go from, like, I'm not righteous to I'm self-righteous, and I'm looking down my nose at somebody 
who I was there six months ago. So Jesus, this teaching is about our heart. And Jesus knows there is this tendency, really it's anywhere, it's in whole, all of society, but it's, there's something about religion. There's something about getting into a church or getting into any religion. And, and we, we had this way of seeing the world. It can quickly become where we're better than you because we've got the thing. We've got the stuff. We've got the answer. My life's better. What's wrong with you? you do you see what I'm saying? And actually, this church, I don't think is judgmental. Like, I experience you guys to be very loving and very welcoming. Really, I mean that. Like, I feel like, I hope it's true. Man, everybody's welcome here. We don't care. We love you. You know, we want this place to be just like the 12 steps. You know, like, hey, come come bring your stuff. We're all, I mean, it's like, I would say if I were y'all, I would say, you should come to my church. Oh, I don't know if I'm good enough. No, man, you should come to my church. You should see how bad our pastors are. Like if you saw, you know, like seriously, they're a mess. So you're welcome here. You know, I mean, real, that's, that should be the spirit of our church. But you and I both know we live in a culture, in American culture, where if you ask, survey says, family feud, survey says, we asked 100 people, what do you think of Christians in America? Top five answers on the board. What's the number one answer? judgmental survey said ding 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 right we i'm not saying we are but somehow somehow we've gotten the reputation of being a little bit judgy fair maybe not fair i don't know and so jesus asked this question he said, don't judge don't judge Just don't judge you like to judge okay that's how you're going to be judged the measure you give is the measure you get. Think on that. And then he says this question, why do you look at the speck in your neighbor's eye? And I want to go, Jesus, that's an easy one. Because it's obvious. Why do I look at the speck in my neighbor's eyes? Hello, I'm good at it. I am really good at seeing your sin. Aren't you good at seeing mine and your, uh, it, man, they're so, God, they're so jealous. They're so jealous. They need to deal with their jealousy. Thank God I'm never jealous. Yeah. I mean, do you see how much she got? She's just always gossiping. Now, how do you know? Oh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that guy's got, man, he's got to deal with his anger. He has got to deal with his anger, Right. I mean, can, I mean, it's just ridiculous. So I can see anger. I can see judgmentalism. In other, that's, that's funny. I can see, <laughs> I can, he's so judgmental. Man, they didn't laugh at the first service either, but it, that is the funniest line to me. How, do you, the irony, you know? You, I know, I'm, I'm, I am, the, I heard Mike Tyson say that one time. I'm very humble. I'm the most humble person I know. <laughs> okay, Mike, you know. Um, the choir sang this beautiful song, beautiful song. And it's actually in our hymnal. I've never sung it that I'm aware of called Help Us Accept Each Other. I mean, there's some deep stuff like help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us. Bring us to believe that we're accepted. And we're meant to love and live. Teach us, O oh Lord, your lessons as in our daily life we struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for people for all, not just for some, to love them as we find them or as they may become. Are you hearing this? That is deep. To love them as we find them or as they may become to see the potential. Like you ever heard the parable of the weeds and the wheat? Where the, there's weeds in the wheat and the, the God, what do you, the go, they go to the, the owner of the farm and say, do you want us to pull up the weeds? Nah, let them grow. That's not good farming advice, is it? Nah, let them grow. 
But don't we like to just say, oh, they're a weed, they're a weed. And God might be, you, you know, you arrogant, arrogant fool. I'm trying to make a disciple out of them. If you would get out of the way, that's not a weed. That's, that's my child. That's... So then it says this, let your acceptance change us so that we may be moved in living situations to do the truth in love, to practice your acceptance until we know by heart the table of forgiveness and laughter's healing art. Help us to practice your acceptance until we know by heart the table of forgiveness and laughter's healing art. That's one of the things I love about 12-step rooms. There's usually a lot of laughter in there and there's a lot of misery. But you come in and like everything's a mess and they, you know what they told me, Tom? We'll love you until you can love yourself. We're gonna help you laugh about the things you used to cry about and we'll help you cry about the things that you used to try to laugh off. Isn't that what the church is? I hope y'all will come here on a Sunday at 10 o'clock. Do y'all know what we have at 10 o'clock here? All through these buildings, we've got these things called Sunday school classes. And that sounds boring, doesn't it? Like Sunday school class. I'm not saying, we're not renaming it, folks. We're not, re, we like tradition, we call it that. Okay, but you know what? Here's the secret. I, as pastor, I don't always go. Some, I, often I go, but sometimes I just wander around because I'm late talking to people and this and that. So I, and you know what's so fun to wander around these halls and you know what you hear? Laughter. And that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff, y'all. That's healing. In fact, sometimes I'm in a Sunday school class. I kind of ping back and forth between two classes when I go. And uh, I'll be in the class and they're, having, they're actually having like a real serious moment and it's like real intense. And then you hear howling laughter through the wall. And you're like, man, I went to the wrong class today. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's the, because that's, that's where this, I mean, y'all, how many of you have been helped by somebody in your life? I have. How many of you were helped by somebody who at the end of the day really judged you? I have people in my life, I have men in my life that, that loved me. They taught me to laugh. They, they, we laughed at each other. We laughed at ourselves. And then while I was laughing, they shoved the truth in there. <laughs> and they got a hold of me. And they changed my life. You know, I have people, I hope you do. I have people in my life that I have given permission to call me out on my stuff. There are men in my life who will say, Tom, man, I'm seeing this in you. I'm seeing self-pity. I'm seeing, you know, I know you struggle with X, you know, how's it going with that? I know that can crop up. I haven't given permission to some people and they still chime in, you know, which is, <laughs> which is awesome, right? But, but hear me, y'all, we, don't we need that? But, but that, take, that can't take, these kind of people that help me, they're not full of themselves. They're not self-righteous. Often they're a mess, but they're working on it. Why do you see this? This is, this is, this is the, the invitation. Because the world's got more than enough of pointing right now, don't we? I saw an image of politics in Washington, bless their heart of somebody pointing at somebody else. You know, and, and you know the old adage, when you're pointing, you've got three fingers coming back to you. Here, this is gold, what I'm about to tell you. Why do you see the speck in somebody else's eye? Usually it's because you share the same struggle and you're often blind to it. Because here's the thing, everybody's got stuff, but it doesn't always get under my skin. So if somebody is getting under my skin, 
they're telling me that they're reflecting to me. Because, I mean, there's, there's other people that have other struggles. They don't bother me at all. Why is it that this person gets under my skin? Why is it that that person gets under your skin? It's, it's actually because of your heart. If they quit, I mean, why do they always have to press my buttons? Okay, here's, here's what Jesus is saying. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye? First, take the log out of your own eye. Why do they press your button? Because you have a button. And what Jesus is saying is, why don't you deal with your own button? And often, maybe it's not the exact same version of that sin, but man, it, again, there's probably exceptions to this, okay? But generally speaking, if somebody's getting under your skin, I'm telling you, that's like a dashboard indicator from God going, hey, hey, you, you struggle, you know the thing that's driving you crazy? Guess what? You got some of this. And what you want them to do, you had better go home and do yourself. They need to deal with their anger. I need to deal with my anger. Wouldn't, don't we live in a culture that would be so much better if, 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 if we quit? And, and this is, I mean, again, this is not about politics in Washington or anywhere else. This is about real life. How many of us genuinely go, golly, I'm so sick. I have this coworker. I love them. But man, if they would just quit, then we'd all be better. You know, I love my family, but man, my one son, my one son, every holiday, why does he have to ruin every holiday? All the rest of us know how to do it. And every time, why? And yet, you know what? You're probably right. Okay? Hear me. You're probably right about your rotten brat kid or your knuckleheaded coworker or your idiot boss or whatever the person that gets under your skin. But Jesus says, look at your heart. Because you can't see to help them. Because you got this log in your heart, in your eye. And this, this is, I mean, it's a simple teaching. You ready? This, the sermon today is not hard. I don't think it's hard to understand. I just think it's hard to practice this teaching. Jesus says, First, take the log out of your own eye. And then, promise, and then you will see clearly. A lot of you actually do have something to offer. But man, you gotta, we got to get this, our stuff dealt with first. How many conversations would go better if we had prayed and not just go, God, would you help them? Help them to hear what I'm trying to tell them. Please help them to, the scales fall from their eyes. No, 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 no. God, help me. What am I not seeing in me? Where am I angry? Where am I bitter? Where am I impatient? Where am I judgmental? Where have I been at fault? Lord, remove from me my own fear that is eating me alive whatever it is that you're struggling with, and then you'll be able to see clearly. How many of you would like that? How many of you would like to see clearly? I would. I would. So we're gonna sing another beautiful song. And today, um, well, I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna sing. And as we sing, I've got some anointing oil and, and Tommy does. and just occasionally I like to just say, if anyone would like to come down front and kneel for healing, for anything, it could be physical, it could be emotional, for, you know, it could be just a, like a, a situation in your life that you just can't get better with. It could be a relationship. I, you, if maybe you wish somebody was here today, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I really wish my brother was here, you know. Hey, or if there's somebody that's on your heart, you can be anointed on their behalf. There's power in that, I believe. This is not magic. This is just a symbol of the presence and power of God to heal you and to be with you in the midst of your stuff. So uh, let's pray. Dear God, um, thank you so much, Lord. I mean, Lord.
forgive us. We have been, Lord, you've, every one of us, you've rescued us. You, you died on a cross and shed your blood to forgive us of our sin. And Lord, who among us can say we've never then turned around and been short with someone else? When you have been so gracious to us. So Lord, we just, I just pray you'll call to mind relationships where maybe there's some healing that's needed. You know, maybe they are in the wrong. Maybe we have been hurt or maybe a loved one's been hurt terribly by the foolishness or the, the wickedness of someone else. And Lord, they, they may be wrong, but we, we don't want our heart to become bitter and judgmental. Lord, you're the only one that sits on the throne. You're the only one that has a right to judge. We do not have the right to judge. Lord, help us to take stock. Help us to, to clean the stuff by your grace, by your spirit, to clean the stuff out of our heart that needs cleaning so that we can be kind and so that we can be helpful, perhaps. Maybe we're not gonna be the one to help somebody else. But Lord, we wanna be clear-eyed. clear eye so that we can help if that moment comes. In Jesus' name, amen. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Let's stand, let's sing.